Welcome to the Transformation Zone podcast, hosted by Stephen Dosu, founder of Salesforce Catalyst. Prepare for a journey into personal growth and business evolution. Discover inspiring stories and strategies to break free from fear, self-doubt, and low self-esteem. Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. You know who's on air again today? <laughs> well, we are here to talk today about Dream is Team. Have you ever heard of the saying, tell me who you are with and I will tell you who you will become? Or the saying, you don't go as far as your dream, you go as far as your team. Well, in today's podcast, we are going to ponder upon few points. First, we want to identify the real-life example of a winning team that thrived through major adversities. Secondly, we want to look at what are the things to look out for when building your team. And then thirdly, how do you build that winning team? To depict the example of what a real life winning team is, let's talk about Nelson Mandela, who was the co founder of the ANC Youth League, the African National Congress. He is the name of the political party, still is, it was, and still is. Nelson Mandela was the anti apartheid leader. Now, if you don't know apartheid, Apartheid was an institutionalized segregation, racism that reigned in South Africa from 1923 to 1996. And it basically promoted the idea that white people are superior to black people. Hence, white folks lived in suburbs, they had the great jobs, the white color jobs, and the black people lived in township in ghettos and had the mini diminishing back jobs in South Africa. Nelson Mandela, because of his will and drive to fight for justice and abolish apartheid, he was imprisoned for 27 years in Robben Island. But he kept fighting until he was released negotiated the end of apartheid and became South Africa's first black president. Then at best, he went ahead, championed reconciliation and equality in the country. But guess what? He did not do it alone. Now notice I said before that he was imprisoned for 27 years. Now the question you want to ask yourself is this. How do you keep running? How do you keep fighting a system like apartheid while you are in jail for 27 years? The only way you do that is when you have a team. A team that is loyal to you. A team that believes in your vision. And Nelson Mandela was alongside the Star Wars. People like Walter C. Zulu and Oliver Tambo, people that believed in his vision to fight against apartheid. Now, it's important to take note here that a team enables its members not to only work together, but most importantly, to bring the best out of one another. As I said before, Nelson Mandela couldn't have possibly have done it, could not have done it alone. But throughout the struggle, throughout the journey, which I urge you, by the way, to read the book, A Long Walk to Freedom by Nelson Mandela, you will read the different roles that Walter C. Zulu, Oliver Tambo, the roles they played in this fight for struggle. 
with the brain and the mind still remaining Nelson Mandela while he was there in jail for 27 years I've got to emphasize this that he was in prison for 27 years with him being there he had loyal people and of course the team teams bigger we're talking ANC is a whole political party group of people that were able to mobilize the country the black people in the country to take a stand and fight for justice so based on Nelson Mandela's story how can we then point out what are some of the key advantages of being in a team number one a team enables its members to have diverse perspective a team brings together individuals with different backgrounds skills and experiences leading to more creative and innovative solutions now if you take Nelson Mandela for example he had different skill set from Oliver Tambo who had different skill set from Wata Sisulu number two a team enables its members to have support and motivation to provide encouragement to one another feedback and support and when you, when you read the book of Nelson Mandela you got to learn that there were times over and over again when he was in jail that he almost gave up <laughs> you gotta read that book you know you, you gotta see that you see that what make people great is not the fact that they don't face adversity but it is their ability to persist through adversity now when you have the right people around you they are able to remind you that you are made to make it three a team favors the quadrupulation of, of resources what do, I, what do i mean by that you see when you come together to work on something the basic mathematic is if you if one person had 50 the other had 50 bring it together as 100 but the truth of the matter is when you come together your effort gets aggregated why because of the friction that happens between you two so instead of having 100 you add up, you end up having 300 okay next point four a team helps with accountability number five a team definitely helps boost your resilience in the face of obstacles or setbacks team can offer you the emotional support and the problem solving skills therefore enable you as an individual to overcome your challenges quickly and more effectively so again if we take the story of Nelson Mandela here's a guy graduate lawyer that has been jailed believing an idea of which he was willing even prepared to die here comes a guy that gets framed and gets put in jail for 27 years now the question is where did he get the resilience to push through it was because he had a sense of accountability towards the people that was following him and that accountability is not only from his side but is also in the people that follow him so when building a team it is therefore essential to look for certain qualities that contribute to the team's success let's explore these qualities through the story of nelson mandela i want to give you seven qualities to look out for when building your team first one leadership mandela exemplified strong leadership qualities including vision integrity resilience he led by example inspiring others with an unwavering commitment to justice and equality simon sinek had a very interesting say he said that leadership is not about the next election it's about the next generation hmm. 
That's nice. Second thing to look at, to look out for when building team, diversity. Mandela understood the importance of diversity within his team. He collaborated with individuals from different backgrounds, recognizing the, recognizing the value of different perspectives and experiences in achieving their common goal of ending apartheid. Helen Keller had to say that alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much. Three, third thing to look at for when building a team, the spirit of collaboration. Fostering a culture of collaboration in the team is highly encouraging. It opens communication and mutual respect. The fourth thing to look out for, that is adaptability. Are people in the team adaptable in the forever changing circumstances? Now, nobody predicted that Mandela would be jailed for 27 years, but his team adjusted and kept fighting the struggle. Nelson Mandela had to say in his book that he says the greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Right. Point fifth is resilience. Definitely you want one build a culture of resilience in your team. It's not about how many times we fall, but it's about how you rise when we fall. Point six, empathy within the team. Mandela showed empathy and compassion towards his team members, understanding their needs, concern and motivations. He built strong relationships based on trust, support and mutual understanding, creating a cohesive and supportive environment. And the last part is strategic thinking. Strategic thinking, this is very important. We've got to think strategically. You see, the people in the ANC that go follow the ANC, the, the Waters, the Zulu, the Oliver Tambos, these were highly strategic thinkers. They were really good at analyzing complex situations, identifying opportunities, and devising effective strategies to achieve the objective. And the bonus I'm gonna give you, that unity is a strength. Marty Stepanek says that when there is teamwork, and collaboration, wonderful things can always be achieved. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't taken anything out of this podcast today, I want you to go with this. That in both professional endeavors or in our private lives, the power of teamwork is undeniable. Just as birds form flock to navigate long distances more efficiently, Humans thrive when they come together in teams. Did you know that swarms, when they are flying in formation, they can fly 60 miles further than when they fly by themselves? Consider the majestic sight of a flock of geese flying in V formation across the sky. Each bird plays a vital role in the journey contributing to the collective effort and ensuring the success of the entire flock. Similarly, in the workplace, teams composed of diverse individuals with complementary skills and strength can achieve remarkable results. Moreover, in our personal lives, being part of a supportive community or family, you need to provide a sense of belonging, security, and mutual aid. Ultimately, whether soaring through the skies as geese or navigating the complex cities of life, teamwork enables individuals like you and I to achieve more together than they ever could there be alone. So I want to leave you with this, ladies and gentlemen, that if you are part of a team and together you are creating, building something that enables others to be more, dream more, Live more. Then I want to tell you, remind you that as from today, you are a leader 
and don't forget we don't go as far as our dreams we go as far as our team ladies and gentlemen that was steven dosu remember that you can be great and i will see you on top Thank you for listening to the Transformation Zone podcast. If you're ready to propel your business and life to new heights, visit our website at www.salesforce.co. Connect with us for personalized transformation strategies. Until next time, embrace the journey and sail confidently toward your success. Thank you.